I've watched my father build this business and I've watched everyone working in it over the last 30 years. And it's moved from a, a wonderful, exciting mechanical business where products that have huge benefit with physics into a new area very much focused on software and cloud communication and mobile devices, enabling products to do sophisticated things beyond mechanics. Well, I actually think this is still very sci-fi, you know, in, in its looks, but not necessarily in the way it's controlled. I mean, the cyclone is still an incredible physical phenomenon, but the monitoring and the controls of our latest technologies is just in a different world, in a different generation. You know, things are moving extremely fast, and what we're able to create is becoming limitless and great, great fun. Ten years ago, there was probably about 50 pure software developers. We're now at about 650 globally. Software used to be around controlling low-level devices, but now it's absolutely critical in every single function we do. So we really talk about embedded software, which is all the software that goes on the product itself. We've got app developers, we've got cloud developers, and then we have these layers of software that lives on the product. We renovated this airport and these hangars for top-secret, cutting-edge sort of future projects and technologies that we're working on for Dyson, which really might sort of carve the way to 2030. And we used to have a sort of five-year outlook, but we're very focused on a 15-year outlook now. And here, it's, you know, it's like Fort Knox. Yeah. I'm allowing you in today because I'm watching you like a hawk. <laughs> we have a range of products here which you'll recognise Dyson products. Six years ago, we had the idea of connecting a purifier, and this enables the consumer to monitor the air quality of their home real time. What's happened is that the hundreds of thousands of people that have these products has given us this incredible data. With all of this data, we can start to map out what's going on around the world. And Stefan, how many connected purifiers are there out there in the world? So we have four million at the moment. We have a live track of four million purifiers. Yeah, it's quite useful because we can see these pollution events that happens right now. We're probably the only one in the world that have that functionality of alerting people around sandstorms, wildfires or anything like that. Here we've had 200 million requests and uh, messages in the last 24 hours from our machines. 200 million? In the last 24 hours. That gives you an idea of the kind of scale we're operating so at. So 200 million interactions? Yes, these are machines sending us information right. and data points. With the Dyson Zone, we're very, very focused on people's health. And this is connected too, and it's, it's critical that it's connected so the consumer can also see how they're protecting themselves by wearing this device. All we had to do when we launched our first vacuum cleaner back in the early 1990s is turn the motor on. That's all we were doing. And now we'll tell you how much battery life or run time you've got left. It'll tell you the power mode it's in and what it's adjusted to according to the floor type. It'll tell you when you need to wash your filter. And it will also tell you exactly what dust particles you've picked up and how many you've picked up as you're vacuuming. And when I move over that sugar, you'll see that the particle has been counted on this screen here. All of this has been enabled by a meridian of sensors embedded into the product. The sensing allows us to get a greater performance out of the product to create maximum efficiency and take that control, in a way, out of the consumer's hands. This is probably one of the best examples of the huge advantage for the consumer and the huge advantage to us, that the consumer no longer has to walk around their home vacuuming. The product will do it for them, and we can improve the product and its performance after they've bought it. So imagine a world where the product is fixed within 24 hours or replaced before you even knew there was something wrong with it. We want to take that anxiety away from consumers. We're absolutely, completely disinterested in gimmick or fruitless features. Where the research and technology is taking us and the new ideas we have, this is becoming more ripe and there are far more benefits for consumers and far more benefits to us as a business. But we need more engineers. We have great plans, great ambitions, and our products are getting more sophisticated. So it's an exciting future.